Alright, this is Eternal Blade, and welcome to part 12 of the Lantern Tutorial. So, I was looking at our little dimensions we have going on here, and something doesn't quite add up, because if this box is 1.8 meters tall, which could be a normal person, and you put it in the door, that door is tiny. So even though it matches this thing, it doesn't quite work out. So I'm going to undo just a few things to, uh, let's see if I can go that far back. I don't know if it'll let me. Alright, so never mind. We're just going to continue on. Make sure you save. Um, so I'm actually going to attach this thing back. Uh, that's okay. And we're going to make this door actually able to be used. So. Well, a two meter door would be nice to have, kind of. So let's go in left view. And. Hmm. Select all these vertices and just drag them up. There we go. So if you go to the camera, you can see this completely ruins whatever we've done. So we have to adjust somehow. So for now I'm going to hide our little hallway and hide oh, this box is useless now. Let's select this and try to match up a look again. Alright, let's see. This is pretty close. Let's go a little further back and then a little more out. Alright, there we go. Now we've got it. And these must be closer to the actual dimensions. Because, um, well, it wouldn't work otherwise. So, next what we can do is bring this and move it back here. And in fact, if we want to use that whole... Actually, let's select these two things. Top. Bring them back. We can use this whole thing. So one, two, three, four. Let's delete this. Make a plane over here. And six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. And now we can have eight things that we can use. So select every other one. And then just uh, pull it forward or backwards, whichever one you want. There we go, now we can use that whole image, and it'll still make sense. Um, let's go into the front view here. Just lining it up with the floor correctly. There it is. And select all the polygons here, extrude. Give them an ever so slight thickness. Okay, there we go. That seems uh, about right. Although the picture is now oddly placed, but we can just scale it up, I guess. There's no reason. We'll actually increase the uh, height of this, so loop should just get us the top. And then over here, oh, actually, we'll just select the vertices here. We'll increase the height of this to be about there. And to give it a bit more depth, I'm going to angle it a little bit. Which way, though? Just give it a five degree turn, like so. Alright. Uh, that looks good. So, next we can uh, unhide all and move this back into position. 
Alright. So there it is. And we'll just bring that back. There we go. Now things are back to normal. At least normal ish. Yeah, there we go. The scale matches, and uh, the door can be walked through if you think about it. So, we can continue. Um, let's see, what was I doing? Ah, uh, yes, this thing here. Wait, no, not this. Element, like this. Attach, okay. Because I just wanted to move it and scale it at the same time, so. What we can do now is, this is actually a fairly large room here. And although you can't really tell from this position, I'm going to see about making uh, some type of chair or a stool to put maybe in this area right here. Alright, um, so I was just doing some research and they really don't use stools, so I was um, seeing about putting a pillow thing. Uh, I don't know if I like it that much. Because for some reason it looks big. It's really not, but I don't know, let me do a quick render and see what we get. Oh, and uh, before I render it, we're going to want to increase... Actually, it's not really increase the height of this wall, but uh, this hallway thing we had going on... We're going to want to go over to it, and... First off, make sure it has the same height. We were close last time, but we weren't quite on the money. So, bring it up here. Okay, and then go to Edge Selection and just select the two top edges here and bring them over like so you can actually bring them over to about here, won't make much of a difference I'm gonna cap this ceiling eventually which will give us even more a glow, and actually I'll just do that right now just real quick to see what we get so go to border here and cap, there we go now we'll do our render Alright, so here's our render, looking pretty good, and actually that pillow is not a bad addition there in the corner. Um, that's just a test color and whatnot, but uh, it's not bad at all. I'm liking the overall setup, so what I want to do now is, you can see how kind of you know blank it is back here. And I don't really care about detail, because there's going to be a depth of field that we're going to do, so it'll just be kind of blurred out. I'll still put a little you know, writing in there or something. And um, we'll do a few other tweaks, but let's carry on. So, uh, for now, I'm going to select this polygon, and can I hide that? No. Alright, we're just going to delete it for now, because we don't really want it in our way. So, let's see, what do we want to do? Mm, let's work on... Damn, it looks so good. I guess we can try the depth of field thing, so... Go to unfreeze all. And we have a little camera here that we created, if I can ever click on it. Come on, click on the camera. Oh, that's why. Alright, there we go. Now, you can do this with any camera, too. The uh, I'll see if I can figure out how to do it on the other camera. But, there is a depth of field here. And this should give us our depth of field pretty nicely. Let's actually go to our camera here and select the little blob. A vast virus see. database has been updated. updated. Let's just move this in a little bit. I think we should move it down just a tad. There we go. I just wanted to focus on uh, this. Let me do another quick rendering to see how that Alright, so here's our render, and you can see the depth of field pretty easily. You know, it's kind of blurry back here, and focus is right here. 
which is exactly what you want because now you can't really you know tell anything of what's happening just that there's a room which is just like in this picture see it's kind of fuzzy back there but this is right in focus so that's exactly the kind of look we were going for um, let's continue now so let me bring this over here and what do we want to do next that render by the way didn't have the ceiling on I uh, forgot about that but let me go find some uh, I guess writing and we'll see what we can do alright a uh, quick Google search brought up this um, so I saved it and we're gonna use that as our texture for the picture so let's go to materials M just create a new V-Ray material, or if you're using Mental Ray, an Arc and Design material. Drag it out here, Diffuse, just add that bitmap right in there. There it is, Chinese writing. And I'm just going to make sure that there is no reflections or anything. So that's good. Just guarantee it. Okay, perfect. So let's uh, just assign that to that. There we go. And double click on the bitmap and press show in viewport and you can actually see it and see how it looks. So as you can see, it's a little bit squished because it's the wrong way. So let's uh, see if we can fix that by changing the angle here. Let's change one of these to 90. What does that do? Nope, not that one. Let's try this one. Nope, not that one. Maybe this one. Oh, there we go. That's what we wanted. And then... Let's just stretch that a bit. As you can see, it's kind of turned on its side, so... Uh, let's turn it... What I hope to be right side up. Don't really know, but... Yeah, that looks right. Okay. So now we've got that. That cool writing in the background. I said I wanted some, uh, like a parchment or something over by this desk. So let's see if we can't do that. Let's make a plane. Standard primitives plane. And there we go. There's some parchment. Let's get rid of those segments here. Make the width a bit more. Not that anyone will really see it, but... Okay. And you just need to lift it a little bit off the table so that you can actually see it clearly. Okay. And now I'm going to go find a parchment texture on Google. Alright, so another quick search of Google brought me up this parchment texture, and uh, I found this crumpled picture crumpled paper texture too. And we can use that as like a displacement map or something for a paper uh, if we want to. So those are the two things we're going to be using. So first let's go to our paper here. Let's give it say 20 by uh, 20 segments. And let's add a displacement modifier. Bitmap. We're going to want to use that crumpled paper. So, references, parchment, displacement. And then you can increase the strength a bit. And that looks good. Material. Let's make a new material here. There's another random V ray material, or standard V ray. Okay, standard uh, bitmap. Let's get that parchment paper. And we'll just drag and drop. Okay, show it in the viewport so we can see what we have. And if we go to our camera, now you can see we have that nice parchment paper right there. Um, and that'll add some good stuff to the scene, and we just want to turn it a bit so it doesn't look perfect. And also, let's add an edit poly modifier here. So that I can... And then you're going to want to turn on soft selection. And I will do the rest in the next part.